Okay, so today we talk about um, fetal distress uh, briefly. So we start with what what is fetal distress. So fetal distress is really acidosis um, uh, due to poor uh, fetal uh, perfusion. It's a very non-specific term and many people uh, want to call it non-reassuring uh, fetal uh, status instead of calling it um, uh, fetal distress. But in our setup, we, we call it fetal distress all the time. So what are the risk factors for fetal distress? So the risk factors for fetal distress include um, prolonged labor, We have um, conditions uh, like um, preeclampsia. Which have vascular problems and therefore can uh, impair perfusion. Same as uh, diabetes mellitus. We have uh, things like anemia. We have conditions like post deaths. We have conditions like IUGR, that's intrauterine growth restriction. Um, when you have oligohydramnios, all these conditions can um, predispose um, a fetus to uh fetal distress um so how do we make this diagnosis on labor ward so in our setup normally we use uh fetal heart rate just using the normal fetoscope we use uh lyqa status so if the Lyqa is meconium stand and we have um, a heart rate that is above 160 or we have a heart rate that is below 110, all these uh, are signs of fetal distress. If you're lucky, you might have a CTG in your labor ward, a cardiotocograph uh, can be there and you can look at uh, decelerations, the slowing of the fetal heart in relation to uh, to contractions. And this can help you uh, make a diagnosis of fetal distress. Um, in other places, you know, you can do fetal scalp blood sampling, and that can help you make a diagnosis using the pH um, status of the blood. So, We've made the diagnosis of fetal distress. We have a high heart rate or a low heart rate, and we have a fresh meconium stand lyqa. What do we do? So the first thing that you need to do is just call for help because you need help. You need to do what is it? What is called intrauterine resuscitation. So you put an IV line on the mother, give her IV fluids. This is helping to resuscitate the baby. Um, you give the mother oxygen. Um, you make her lie in left lateral position. If the patient was on oxytocin, you stop, stop the oxytocin because we know all this is um, um, making uh, the uterus contract and reducing the perfusion to the baby. Um, I think you need to quickly, as you resuscitate, quickly get consent um, for uh, for caesarean section or get consent for vacuum or C-section. So that's why you need to get consent. So if for vacuum, if the labor is in second stage, 
the station is favorable no signs of obstruction this is the quickest um, way to get the baby out prepare your vacuum delivery machine um, and uh, with the mother's contractions with the contractions which are good you can help the baby um, be delivered we know that in our setup if you have a fetal distress this might take you one to two hours to actually get the baby out so if you can do a vacuum you do a, a good service for the uh, for the uh, for the baby and you might have a, a good outcome so if the baby is not in second stage or if the labor is not in second stage then this mother has to go for c-section so you've already given iv fluids um because you know the anesthetist is going to give spinal anesthesia very likely and you've already started the iv fluids the iv fluids are also helping perfusion improve perfusion for the baby um you need to make sure the resuscitator is ready for after delivery of the baby whether you're using a vacuum or or they're going for cesarean section make sure that the all your penguin suckers are there and functional your ambu bags are correct size the masks are of correct size there's enough warmth already once the diagnosis is made on the resuscitator you have everything that you need uh, for resuscitating the baby so once we go for cesarean section we need an experienced anesthetist and you need um, so that the anesthesia is done quickly um, and you need an experienced surgeon so that um, you don't take um, long uh, trying to extract the baby when the baby is actually in distress because you can end up with um, a severely asphyxiated baby or you can end up with um, with a fatal death. So that is how we um, generally uh, deal with um, fetal distress on, on labor ward when, when we have one.